Right folks, and welcome back. So we've got what we were waiting for. Um, the Land Rover 110 has just been delivered by my mechanic. He's also took the quad bike away, um, so that can get fixed. And the Range Rover's just on its way. Hess has just taken it over there. So um, we can get the Range Rover sorted because we've got a funeral next week. So need the fan and service doing and just get it ready. And there's a brake sticking, so We'll jump into this video, I'll turn the camera around and I'll introduce the Land Rover. So I don't know what the quality of the, the noise will come out because it is quite windy up here. So this is a 1990 Land Rover Defender 110 200 TDI. So it's the first of the Defenders. So you had the, the 90 and the 110 that came after the series Land Rovers and then in 1990 they became the Defender with the introduction of the 200 TDI engine. So this is the 200 TDI. Um, I think that's the best engine that Land Rover made. Other people will argue differently, but I'm looking at it um, from a usability and a practical point of view and an uncomplicated engine that I can work on, is reliable, you can get parts for, etc. I know people say the Puma engine, well the Puma engine is the engine that's in that transit. They're not a bad engine, but they're just, they're not as durable. And the TD5, yeah, I know the TD5's got loads of power, lovely Land Rovers. I promise when something goes wrong with them, there's that many things like crank sensors, e, e, ECUs, and all that sort of stuff that somebody like me can't fix. So it looks pretty manky. This has been off-road for 14 years. It has been in use. It has been um, working on like a farm and an estate in Otterburn in Northumberland and it just wasn't MOT'd and road taxed for a long time so the tyres are all good but they're perished. I like those wheels, I actually like the way it looks. It's a bit dirty, it'll get a bath tomorrow. Look, Psycho's inspecting it. The chassis itself is not that bad. The chassis has had work, especially this side, it's had an outrigger made. The thing is, some of the repairs to the chassis are not original. They're, they're farm workshop repairs, so it's been, I wouldn't say bodged, because the quality of the repairs on that chassis are actually pretty good. They're, they're probably better than a Land Rover would have made. But the biggest problem is, there is a section here where this outrigger is, and the chassis is rotten. Now, it's rusty front to back, but this is the only part that's rotten. It has had a rear quarter chassis. Now, the thing is, we were gonna, my mechanic was gonna cut it out and weld it. But the problem is we had a long chat about it and the bulkhead needs repairs. The estimate for welding on the chassis is about 700 pound. Now, the thing is, then what do you do? Do you just sandblast the chassis? Do you galvanize it? Do you just tart it up and keep using it? By the time I spent £700, if I shot blasted it, if I galvanised it, it's about £1,000 to galvanise the chassis just now. I bought a brand new chassis that's galvanised, it's getting delivered in two weeks time. Far superior quality and it's £2,200 delivered. So I bit the bullet. You know, the heart of a Land Rover is the chassis and the bulkhead, so I bit the bullet and we're replacing, replacing both the chassis and the bulkhead. This has had some repairs done. So obviously it's had a section in there, etc. where they go. This side's pretty bad. You can see down the bottom there. So it needs, it needs at least a post. Ooh. And the door falls off. But it's a Land Rover. So again, we've bought a galvanised bulkhead. It's not quite the right one for this because we couldn't get the right one. It's one for a Puma. I'll make it work. It's had quite a bit of money spent on it, probably 20, 25 years ago. You know, it's got the swing away wheel carrier, better quality tow bar. It's had the fancier wheels, well, they were fancy at the time. It's had a retrim. It's been a recovery vehicle at some point. Everything is just a bit seized up. This had the headlining kit, all once cleaned. 
taken apart. And you know, the seats, they're a bit tatty. I'm not sure whether we'll change them or just clean them up for now. You know, it's had all the carpet kit. You know, the cubby box with the, you know, the radio. Probably state of the art back in the day. It's done 176,000 miles and the miles do add up. So let's see how we go. Right, glow plug light. You always have to heat these 200 TDIs. Don't know why, but seemingly you damage the engine if you don't. So rudimental and agricultural, but she starts first time. There's an oil leak off a power steering pipe. I've just spent quite a bit of money and had the, the timing belt done, because we knew the timing belt hadn't been done for years. But in essence, you know, you could fix the chassis, um, fix the lights, patch the bulkhead, and get this through an MOT. So yeah, um, so she starts, she runs, she drives. We've had her driving around happy with it you know the plan for this is to have a low-cost runabout we've got the Range Rover Sport we've had it for years um, road tax is expensive insurance has just gone up we've just had our insurance renewal and it's jumped another 150 pound this beast here 101 pound a year fully comp to insure it does need MOT and tax just now I've actually got the tax disc that's the last tax disc off the windscreen. £104.50 that was for six months tax when it was last taxed on the 2nd of November 2009, 14 years ago. But yeah, um, it's 33 years old, so we will have to pay MOT and road tax for the next seven years and then she'll be tax and MOT exempt. So we're, our budget for the restoration on this is about £10,000 in materials i'm probably going to pay a professional spray job um at the end and you know we'll see how we go we could we could blow that budget we could spend twenty thousand. you know my mechanic said you could easily spend twenty thousand on one of these nowadays if you're buying the replacement galvanized doors the galvanized chassis all that we are trying to shop around and be as frugal as we we can but this is what's going on this is the latest project so i've actually been working on the bulkhead um i've cleaned that got it all ready and um yeah just um i've just done all the seam sealing on the bulkhead today Right, so basically yesterday um, I cleaned up the bulkhead, I cleaned the dross off the seam welds um, where it's been galvanised, I flattened everything down and then I acid etched it. Now it's supposed to be um, etched and dry after two hours. I've left it overnight just to make sure it's completely dry, just to make sure the chemical reaction has worked and now the salt crystals on it from the chemical reaction that I need to wash off just using clean water from a sponge. This is actually dirtier than it looks because the water coming off is like salty white.
Now I'm going to leave that to dry and then when it's dry we'll do it with seam sealer. Right, I know the canvas are, it's a wee bit dark but it's kind of the best I can do, the, the light's shining a lot. So we've washed all the stuff off the bulkhead and it's just about dry. So we've got to do all the seams and any gaps with seam sealer. So I'm using the stuff out of screw fix, it goes in a silicone gun, so it's called X8 hybrid sealant. You can paint over it, um, it does metal, it's supposed to actually be very good stuff. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it on and then I will um, basically uh, brush, brush it in if I need to. It's a lot nicer to use this stuff than the old um, seam sealer. We used to renovate tractors and do vehicles up and the old brush on seam sealer that was in a tub, you had to try and mix it up and it just wasn't nice. Right folks, so it's had about two hours drying, there's still a bit of dampness around some of the, some of the bulkhead, but I'm just getting some of the seam sealer on. It's something you can't really brush, it's something that's got to be nice and slow. So just anywhere where I think there's a bit of a gap, where I think water could ingress and cause the seal to basically rot out from the bark, even if it's, you know, air moisture, it will cause it to rot out. So I'm just sealing up every seam. So here, obviously, your windscreen will sit with a seal, but there's a potential, well, you will get water, moisture, condensation in that tiny gap there. Yeah, so the galvanising doesn't go everywhere. If a seam wasn't cleaned up right, the galvanising won't go into that. It, it doesn't, it's not that thin. So like this, we've sealed it. I've rubbed it with my gloves. That's why I've got rubber gloves on, because this stuff's really sticky. Just use the glove and then using paper towel to clean up. But just doing all the corners, all the bits, you know, it's probably a good two, three hours work here, but... It's just worth getting right before we start getting the primer on. So you will have just seen me seam seal in the bulkhead. So obviously I've cleaned it up, done everything. I've sealed all the joints. I've got it stood up, air drying. Some of the beads are a bit big around the footwells, so I'm going to give it till the weekend. Today's Sunday. It's about five o'clock on Sunday. So I'm going to let all that seam sealer dry all week cure and then we're going to etch prime it. I've ordered six rattle cans of etch primer. And um, yeah, I'm going to etch prime it and probably do like Raptor paint or bitumen on the, the footwells and everything that are going to get the hammer. So again, this is it. It's not as bad as it looks. You know, I'll probably give it a wash tomorrow, take the roof rack off. I've got a caramel wheel that goes on a drill to try and take some of these stickers off. But you know, it's been really classy. Look at those stripes on the wheels. That's real 90s, you know. All that's missing is fluffy dice. You know, it's got a proper, proper skid, whatever you call it, for towing. It's 
got the snorkel, safari snorkels. I think they're called roast style wheels or something like that. It's even got what every Land Rover needs. Well, every Land Rover and every John Deere tractor should have one of these. It's got an Anderson connector to jump starter. Runaway spare wheel carrier, extra lights. It's going to be a different colour, but it's going to be done up similar to what it is. I'm not going to go mad and, you know, I'm not going to go mad and make it like a yuppie car. It is for work, this is. It's for working on a small Holden. It's for going to town. It's for towing the Eiffel Williams trailer. I'm in no doubt that the Range Rover won't last a lot longer without serious repairs. So the idea is to get this done and then either the Range Rover will have to have to have its work done on probably a chassis or something in a couple of years or we'll have to replace it. So anyway, I'll wrap this video up here. That's a Land Rover 110. Tell me what you think of it. It's going to feature quite a lot on the channel from now on because it's just a project we're doing. You know, we're doing the body just now. In the winter, we're going to be concentrating on this because we struggle. The weather gets really bad up here in the winter, especially October to March. You know, we're right next to the sea. It's cold and it's damp. So the, the idea is play with this in the winter, get it done, do all the, the donkey work, making brake pipes, all that rubbish. And we'll try and do a video every week. Thanks, folks.